We are indeed in for a very special treat this year, as you very well know. Uh, for those of you who have not had the pleasure of uh, meeting and hearing our good friend, right time Bob Darch, I, I should just mention to you that uh, without exaggerating, uh, Mr. Darch is probably one of the people most responsible for the revival of ragtime in the world because at the time during the 1950s he, when he was collecting ragtime sheet music when other people weren't in the years that he was personally going throughout the Midwest and introducing, reintroducing ragtime to the small towns of the Midwest including Sedalia and making these towns aware of their ragtime heritage. He was doing it on a personal basis, on a one-on-one -on -one relationship, by playing in uh, you know, theaters and saloons and anywhere where he could play his ragtime. And over the years, he had a profound impact upon reestablishing ragtime. And uh, through his very generous sharing of his ragtime sheet music collection, many young people like Traver Titchener's and myself and people who were collecting in those years had a chance to get copies of a lot of these very rare originals which he had himself preserved. He was also very instrumental in contacting Joseph Lamb and preserving much of the music of Joseph Lamb, uh, which will eventually see the light of day. So it's, uh, it's wonderful that all of those efforts have ended up in not only ragtime being preserved, very much thanks to his efforts, but he, of course, is still delighting audiences, not just in the Midwest, as he was then, but now all over the world. And uh, he has just come back from a, a European tour and leaves Monday for Ireland. So we are indeed very fortunate to have one of the true great legends of ragtime, ragtime Bob Darch. Six <laughs> non stop from here to Buffalo. <laughs> We're going to need a little something at the end of this thing to hold it down. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, I might add. And Toronto has always held a, I've always held a really warm spot for Toronto. Um, it's a place that's treated me very kindly uh, right from the beginning. Through the efforts of Pierre Burton uh, and his writings, why uh, the 76 Club existed and held on for about six years which was the ragtime place in town. And then Lewis came along down there with the Golden Nugget, and other places came out to Silver Rail, and you can name it on and on and on. Do we have a little weight we can put on the end of this? Anyway, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm not gonna deliver a big opus here, but um, just wanna tell you how pleased I am to be here. I think it's been nine years since I was here last. Seeing all my friends from Fort Faraway out there, Jim Kinnear and his wife, Lewis, and it's been a, I don't want to do it. Is that your newest book?
more is happy when it comes out right, too. <laughs> that last note that fires me. Anyway, uh, called the Georgia Camp Meeting written by Kerry Mills in 1897, who went on to write such things as Meet Me in Louie Louie and uh, other tunes uh, that were very popular.